Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production, and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-711-0290 or 0718-100-235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology. Follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. And you can also check out our website, www.site.org.zw. Mama Biza, you see before you members of the Match Billiland Collective here gathered to obtain feedback from you. Please, the floor is now yours. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me start by saying all protocols observed. Um, we may all be aware that on the 21st of March, His Excellency the President had an interactive dialogue with uh, most civic society groups based this part of the country. And uh, I was privileged to be part of the gathering that was at State House on the 21st of March. And uh, during that discussion, as you may be aware, a number of pertinent issues uh, touching on political, social and economic, even cultural, were raised with the president. And uh, I'm sure for those of you who attended that gathering, the president made an undertaking. In fact, in his own words, he said, upon return to Harare, he was going to have a further discussions with his cabinet pertaining to the pertinent issues that were raised. So uh, it is in light of that discussion that a matrix, which I trust has been circulated, I'm sure all of us is, are in possession of an implementation matrix, uh, which touches on some of the key issues uh, that we discussed at that meeting. Now, uh, the purpose for my presence today uh, is basically to confirm that, yes, indeed, this matrix is originating from the office of the president and cabinet. And further, to confirm that as government, we are ready to implement some of the key issues that are highlighted on the matrix, of course, through the relevant line ministries. So, if you allow me, I will go item by item on the items that are listed on the implementation matrix. And uh, you may want to know that this matrix is a result of what we minuted as the Secretariat 1st of March. We may have left out certain issues and we are happy to take them on board if at all you feel there's something that was discussed which is not reflected on this matrix. We were the Secretariat. We're simply capturing what was coming out from the discussions that were taking place. So I'll start with the first item, which is the issue of birth certificates. Uh, the implementation modalities that came out from this item were that we are supposed as government to facilitate the issuance of birth certificates of victims affected by Gukura Undi. As we looked at the implementation, we also focused on who, whose responsibility is it to ensure that these birth certificates are issued. And uh, the Minister of Home Affairs, obviously, is the ministry that is responsible. Let me point out at this stage that this matrix has since been circulated to the relevant ministry, to the minister, the permanent secretary, to start implementation. And you, as you can see, there is a timeline. 
the president has indicated that all those that are responsible for implementation are supposed to report back on progress. This can only be achieved through a deliberate cooperation between the implementers and those that require the service. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm appealing to all of us to uh, cooperate as much as we can. The moment the officials from the relevant ministries commence, they uh, in fact to continue with the dialogue by way of engaging you, by way of requesting you on what is it that they require to start the uh, issuance of the birth certificates of uh, victims who have been affected by the Gukura Hundi. On the issue of death certificates, it's more or less related. Uh, even if we look at the legislation that governs birth certificates, it's uh, both for birth certificates and death certificates. So again, the Minister of Home Affairs is responsible. If you look at the implementation uh, time frame, this is something that the president felt should be implemented immediately without delay. So we expect that the Ministry of Home Affairs has since commenced the communication with uh, the Blawayo Collective in terms of coming up with uh, the implementation modalities. The issues of exhumation of victims of Gukura Hunti, you notice that we uh, put under the implementation modalities that we should allow legal, I would like to emphasize the word legal, legal exhumation and reburial of victims in an orderly manner. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I would like to emphasize the legal aspect to it, uh, as we were given these instructions as uh, the office of the president and cabinet, it was felt largely that there is a law that governs the issue to do with the exhumations of any, 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 in any case, even without focusing on Gukura Hundi, there is a law that governs the issue of uh, exhumations. So when we say in a legal manner, we are saying that those that would like to uh, conduct the ex exhumations should follow the procedures that are laid down in terms of the law. And as we looked at the implementation practicalities, we realized that it is the local authorities that are mostly in involved and who are supposed to be assisting people to achieve an orderly uh, exhumation and reburial of the victims of Gukura Hundi is what came out from the engagements with the president. Again, you find that the Minister of Home Affairs and Cultural Heritage are mostly responsible to assist communities that have been affected in this regard. So in terms of implementation, you notice that we say that it has to be done upon receipt of request. Again, this is meant to facilitate orderly uh, exhumations through the assistance of the relevant government ministries so that it's not done in a haphazard manner. It's not done in a manner that violates the law. Because if we look at our act, uh, that governs the burials. Uh, burials have to be, uh, reburials have to be done. They have to be notified to the relevant authorities. It cannot be done by any person anyhow without notification to those that are responsible, the relevant ministry, as I said. Uh, you find that there are penalties in terms of the relevant legislation for any person who does uh, this without uh, following the proper legal procedures. So our expectation as government is that there will be further engagements uh, between the officials from the Minister of Home Affairs and any other relevant ministry 
perhaps local government in trying to uh, achieve orderly and legal exhumations and reburial of victims. Under the fourth item, you find uh, there is an issue of open discussions on Gukura Hondi. This is an item for those that were present again at CETA was on the 21st of March. It came from the floor. In fact, there was a concern that people are being victimized, arrested, and subjected to all sorts of abuse whenever there is mention of the word Gukura Hondi. The president was very clear about this issue. He says uh, this should not be the case and that people should be free to discuss their experiences. So in terms of implementation modalities, uh, we say that we should devise protection mechanisms for those that are affected by Gukura Hundi to be free to discuss their experiences. Uh, it would appear as if it's a bit broad and vague, but what we had in, in mind was much as they, they are laws to protect people and much as the constitution also uh, gives people the freedom to, exp to freely express themselves. But we thought perhaps if the relevant ministry allows further engagements with the communities that are mostly affected. They should get to know, they should get to the bottom of it to understand what is it that the people have been experiencing in terms of um, failing to freely discuss, freely express their experiences. So the protection mechanisms that we had in mind is something that will be a result of further engagements between the officials from the Ministry of Home Affairs and the affected communities in order to allow people to express themselves. We also appreciate that by freely expressing themselves, it's also part of the healing process that we all uh, envisage. Uh, we, 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 we very much appreciate that uh, there is need to, 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 to allow people to, to some people are still mourning, some people are still aggrieved. So it is only through freedom of expression, freedom of discussion, sharing experiences that perhaps uh, people may get to hear. We, 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 we borrowed a very interesting phrase that we learned uh, on the 21st of March. Dr. Dr. Nguenya, he said, pain not transformed is pain transmitted. Am I right? Pain not transformed is pain transmitted. So because of that, we thought we should come up with those mechanisms to allow people to freely express themselves, to freely discuss their experiences in the process of healing. So the Minister of Home Affairs, once again, is the responsible ministry. And we expect as government that officials from the Minister of Home Affairs should be up and about visiting, discussing with various communities who have been affected. And the implementation is supposed to be immediate. When we say immediate, we mean like as soon as one receives this implementation matrix, there should be phone calls perhaps to the multi collective to ask, for instance, how do we go about what should be the starting point in terms of uh, the engagements. And our fifth item on provision of medical assistance. Uh, again, this item was uh, raised on the 21st of March to His Excellency the President and it was mostly a concern that they are victims of Gugura Undi, who some of whom are failing to access medical attention, some are maimed, some have uh, chronic ailments that they require medical attention and yet they are unable to uh, provide for their own medical needs. So the implementation modality we have here is that special provision for medical attention should be provided 
to victims of Gukura Hunti. Again, you notice this may appear to be broad, but what we had in mind is that when you reach out to the communities, it is only them who are able to identify and bring to the attention of government as to not only the numbers, but the names, the details, the location, where to find the victims so that medical um, assistance can be provided. And again, this is an issue for immediate implementation by the Minister of uh, Health and Child Care. And because this involves pain and suffering, it's a human suffering issue, a human rights issue, unfortunately, which has been denied for a long time. But it's never too late in terms of pain and suffering. We believe if the Minister of Health and Child Care immediately engage the communities, we shall be talking of people getting medical assistance in our next report. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we believe we are going to be in a continuous engagement process. We are also going to be following up periodically to see what results have been achieved ever since the 21st of March when these things were first debated. So the Minister of Home Affairs is expected to be calling you asking for details on how and where to reach uh, some of these victims who require medical attention. This is urgent in our view. This uh, the Zambezi water project and uh, this is an issue which has always been discussed but without much in terms of progress. However, on the 21st of March, the matter was again put to the attention of the president and it is my hope that this should mark a turning point where we shall see progress being reported on this uh, very, very important project. So we are saying the Zambezi water project should be prioritized as it is going to unlock economic value to, uh, to citizens across the country. We know it was erased for, the, for this region, but by its very nature, the impact of the project will be not only for this region, but for the entire country. But we know where uh, people are experiencing uh, the waste in terms of shortages of water. So again, it was said to, uh, to the, the, the responsible ministry, which is lands agriculture, water, climate and rural resettlement, they have been told to give monthly updates uh, in terms of progress. You may want to bear slightly a little bit with these uh, implementing ministries because, for instance, when I spoke to the Minister of Lands about this issue, uh, it also requires budgetary and um, cost implications. So I'm sure they are working on on that, it's something may, maybe we, we, we may give them a bit of time, but because the president himself said they should start to work on it and give monthly updates, so we are also expecting them to account to the president and also in terms of fulfilling the president's promises to the people of this region, you may also request that there be answers as to what exactly they are doing on the ground. On item seven, there is the issue of alignment of local governance legislation. Uh, this is an issue of harmonizing laws governing local authorities to ensure efficiency and ease in the implementation of devolution. Uh, on this one, maybe let me just share a little bit as the Secretary for Justice you may be aware that one of our mandates is to align legislation with the Constitution. The alignment of devolution laws has taken us a bit of some time. And you may want to know that uh, it was very difficult for us as Minister of Justice to get the cooperation that we required from the Minister of Local Government to align this, uh, these laws. I'm very happy that the current dispensation have seen it fit to say we are now devolving 
and they've given us specific instructions to say now you can align uh, the laws with the constitution i'm sure you heard us in the past we've always been bemoaning the lack of cooperation from line ministries in terms of alignment of legislation because much as we align legislation but we get the input from the relevant ministries so this is one area where there was no cooperation in the past so i was happy to see that uh now there's the willpower we are already seeing laws being harmonized i understand uh, the minister of local government working in conjunction with our department of legislative drafting uh, at an advanced stage of uh, coming up with these laws for, for, for uh, local governance but us as minister of justice we are also working on a constitutional amendment to uh, in order to enable devolution uh, you may want to know that we notice that there are contradictions in the constitution itself especially pertaining to members of parliament who have been incorporated into the provincial councils uh, there's a section it should be section 129 if i'm not mistaken uh, which uh, talks about the composition of these provincial councils and again, when you go to the executive section where uh, it speaks about how a member of parliament vacates office, you find that a member, one of the reasons why a member of parliament will vacate office is when they become a member of these councils. So on the other hand, it says reason for vacation. And on the other hand, they are members of provincial councils. So to us, it was an incon inconsistency, a contradiction. Uh, for which we have amended the constitution we have gazetted the amendments but they will have to run for three months before they are brought to parliament so you can see that we are determined to uh you know work on the laws that enable devolution so because we have been asked to implement immediately and to finalize within six months we believe this is achievable in fact as much as the minister of justice is concerned this is achievable so as we continuously engage let us ask each other where are we and even challenge each other to say you said this but where are we today you know it's a process of just uh, complementing each other and again item eight talks of devolution it's a continuation of um devolving government processes to prioritize local businesses in the awarding of tenders and giving locals first preferences when filling in positions. Uh, this is an item again that was brought to the attention of His Excellency the President on the 21st of March at State House. There was a concern that uh, there the, the, the is need to also uh, prioritize locals when uh, doing business there was a feeling that uh, a certain region was getting priority over others and the president uh, was made to comment on it so this is mostly in terms of the issuance and awarding of tenders and uh, it's a process whereby we thought the minister of local government public works and national housing is supposed to work on um to be honest uh, i'm not so sure how the minister of local government is going to uh, come up with implementation modalities here they are well placed to explain as they engage with yourselves on how they are going to do it but the president still felt it was immediate and continue and it required continuous implementation since it's an ongoing thing tenders come and go but it cannot be a once-off process to say we've corrected today and tomorrow you repeat the same undesirable co conduct. So uh, the Minister of Local Government, we expect them to again get hold of the multiple chapter and uh, pave a way forward in terms of this critical area. And we also have social service delivery where it was felt that we need to improve social service delivery through provision 
of schools, clean, safe, portable water, and clinics to need the areas as contained uh, in the attached report. I made mention of a report. The report is mostly made of the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 21st of March, uh, touching on all issues in detail. For those that attended the 21st March meeting, I'm sure you still recall a lady, uh, was it from Rwanda, who narrated her ordeal. Yes, uh, you can see she's here. And uh, she was talking about the water shortages, how much she has to travel long distances in order to get this very valuable commodity. And the president felt sometimes this could be a result of negligence by the responsible authorities because the president also felt it doesn't take much in terms of sinking bores and so forth. So the Ministry of Public Service, Labor and Social Welfare was also given the mandate to look into the issue of improving the social service delivery. Um, you must note that uh, whilst the uh, item is worded in a broad manner, but we had in mind the plight of the lady in Gwanda such that for purposes of implementation, we are looking forward to seeing that area getting first priority over other areas. We deliberately said uh, we improve social service delivery as if uh, it's broad. Yes, it's broad because everyone needs clean water elsewhere in the country. But because we're concentrating on this part of the country, this is where we are expecting to see the first results as we expand to, to, to other parts of the country. And I'm not speaking for myself, but this is the instruction that we got from His Excellency to say that lady from Gwanda, her case is very simple. I'm sure some people are just simply sitting on their work. Why can't they attend to the area? We want to hear her saying, Your Excellency, Thank you very much. Our situation has improved when we further re-engage. So this is what we are expecting the Minister of Public Service to, to be doing. On number 10, uh, there was an issue to increase participation of women. And this was uh, the, to ensure that there is inclusivity of women in Parliament uh, cabinet and other governance structures. Yeah, this also was discussed very emotionally by some of the women who attended the 21st meeting. You can see the Minister of Justice has been tasked, but when I got that assignment, I scratched my head to say, um, surely how do I influence what happens in cabinet, for example? But uh, as we discussed further with some of my colleagues, we thought perhaps with um, uh, collaboration with the Minister of Women Affairs, we could look at our laws and see where the loopholes are. Much as the, the, the quota system is provided for, uh, uh, what, what, what penalties are there for non-compliance and so forth, perhaps we could revisit our laws revisit the penalty sections so that uh, you do not see a cabinet of three women and 100 men and so forth and so forth. So it's a question of looking at the existing laws and improving on them in order to uh, uphold the cause of women. On item 11, the NGO state engagement platform uh, to establish an NGO state engagement platform for sustained dialogue between state and non-state actors. This was mostly for the Minister of Public Service. When, when, when the President addressed uh, uh, on the 21st of March, he came along with the Minister of Public Service and she made an undertaking on her own. She said she wanted to engage uh, the NGOs so that there is a platform for dialogue between the state and the non-state actors. It was also accepted that generally there is mistrust between state actors and non-state actors. 
and suspicion sometimes. In the worst case scenario, it degenerates into hate. But if you look at it really, it's for no apparent reason. We said there's one thing that uh, unites us. We are all Zimbabweans. And all the efforts that we try to put across are for the betterment of ourselves and our people. So we thought it uh, good that we should establish such a platform with the Minister of Public Service expected to have a first interaction with this part of uh, the country. And I'm sure she will be getting in touch with you very soon. And uh, yes, this was also against the background of some NGOs suspecting that they were going to be deregistered, speculation, falsehoods, misrepresentations, and so forth and so forth. So the minister thought this is a very good idea to try and iron out our difference. We may still work together and even pursuing different interests, agreeing to disagree in a polite and humane manner. This is what is sought to be achieved under that item. And we are hoping that it's going to be implemented immediately. Immediately. And the issue of the NPRC, that is the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission lifespan, uh, the suggestion was that it be extended uh, for a further, was it five or ten years? In fact, uh, coincidentally, on the date when the president engaged this community, uh, there was a judgment from the High Court in Masuingo where the High Court judge extended the lifespan. In fact, he ruled in favor of extending the lifespan of, of the NPRC. And I'm happy the president indicated that he was very much supportive of the idea of the extension of the NPRC. So on this item, the office of the president and cabinet together with ourselves, the Minister of Justice, we are expected to uh, make sure that this is achieved. Uh, some of you may want to ask me that, yes, the judge made a ruling and we saw the office of the Attorney General appealing against the decision. Yes, that was before they got instructions that we are no longer opposing this. Because naturally we're going to appeal, but the appeal may not be prosecuted because of this instruction from the president but the initial reaction was to appeal you know so this is uh, where we are and lastly the expansion of the education curricula to include at least two local languages in the curricula this was given to the minister of primary and secondary education and i'm told it's something that they have already been doing and the last item touches on police inaction. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, the events of 14 January uh, up to the 16th of January, where we saw people looting shops, destroying properties, harming and injuring other innocent people, they should not be repeated. And we were very concerned uh, when we heard that uh, there was there were allegations of uh, some members of the police force who were perceived not to be assisting members of the public who were affected by these riots so the matter was brought to the attention of his excellency and the issue was to investigate and report on the causes of police inaction and perceived insubordination during 14 to 16 July riots. And uh, this is one item where I'm also appealing to all of us that whoever has information that will lead to uh, exposing some of these undesirable elements, it will be more, mostly appreciated because uh, the Minister of Home Affairs alone, they, they, they may never make any headway without the assistance, especially from the members of the public who witnessed some of these things. This item requires immediate implementation and a report back within three months. 
uh, the time frame is measured from the date when the ministers received these letters. So most of them must have received the letters uh, not later than the 4th of April. So the counting has already started and it is expected that in three months time we should get reports of these things. Thank you.